Well, they were a very famous uh, acting family uh, in the 19th century. Thomas Turnan, her father, um, and Fanny, her mother, who was known as Fanny Jarman when she was uh, a young actress. Uh, she was particularly successful. Thomas wasn't so successful, and uh, he sadly uh, died quite early on in the 1840s. And um, Fanny Jarman, Mrs. Turnan, uh, Ellen's mother, uh, was then found herself with three daughters, uh, all of whom she apprenticed to the stage. They went on the stage as, as children, professional stage. And uh, she kept the family together and uh, continued her own very distinguished career uh, and launched her three daughters, uh, that is uh, Fanny and Mariah and Ellen, the youngest, <coughs> um, on professional careers. <clears throat> In the case of uh, Fanny, she became a, a singer, um, and uh, Mariah and Ellen actresses. Though Ellen uh, wasn't very happy, I think, uh, being an actress. She didn't have much of a, a career uh, before she met Dickens. Dickens was... Um, producing uh, a play uh, by Wilkie Collins called The Frozen Deep uh, as an amateur production. Uh, and um, in London, he, his family, his sister-in-law, his daughters acted in it. But then they were going to take it to Manchester, uh, to a much bigger venue, to the Free Trade Hall, where you really needed professional actresses, you know, who could project their voices and so on. And uh, so at that point he recruited Mrs. Turner uh, mm -hmm. and two of her daughters, the middle one, Mariah, and Ellen, the youngest, uh, to take the places of his daughters and sister-in-law, uh, who had been in the London production. So they played uh, in the Frozen Deep in Manchester, and that is how he first, uh, in, as far as we know, that's the first, he may, might have seen Ellen on the stage, but that's the first time uh, he really had much to, to do with them. And uh, he seems to have been uh, smitten, shall we say. <laughs> Ellen Turnan's life after marriage, when she married George Warden Robinson, um, knocking 10 years off her life, um, which was not discovered till after her death. Um, she married him shortly after Dickens's death, uh, had two children by him, a son and a daughter. Um, he was uh, uh, training for the church, but she didn't want him to, to do that. She, she persuaded him uh, to become a schoolmaster instead, and they ran a, a very successful school in, in Margate um, for some time. She gave recitations, she was celebrated uh, for this, giving recitations from Dickens's works and other, um, other poems, Kipling, etc., etc., that she would... Uh, uh, because although she didn't much like uh, acting, professional acting on the stage, she was obviously a very good solo performer. Uh, and uh, did a number of these charity readings and was very famous for it. Catherine Longley uh, saw that there was a mystery here, you know, what actually were the relations of Ellen and, and Dickens, was she his mistress or was she not? There was an enormous amount of stuff written about it, scandal and gossip and so on, but very little substance um, that, that could clinch the matter as to exactly what their relationship was, that it was very, very close, that she was pretty much at the centre of Dickens's emotional life for the last 12 years of his life was undoubted, but, you know, the actual nature of their relationship, specifically, was it sexual or not, um, was still, and is still, <laughs> a matter of debate. So Catherine, uh, using all her archival skills and her amazing pertinacity, what she called her marplish streak, uh, she set herself to try and solve this mystery <clears throat> to, by um, consulting all the archival and biographical records, that she, historical records that she could possibly find. Uh, she embarked on 
trying to prove a negative, really. I mean, trying to prove that Ellen was not Dickens's mistress, and it's, it's very difficult to prove a negative. <laughs> Uh, she worked for years uh, on uh, an enormous manuscript called, uh, which she entitled A Pardoner's Tale. I'm not quite sure why uh, she, she did that, uh, used that title, but anyway, she did. Produced uh, a, a, an amazing work of scholarship, really, with uh, thousands of footnotes and appendices. I mean, she followed up every possible lead. Um, to uh, try and uh, prove uh, that the relationship must have been uh, technically innocent, as it were. Uh, she couldn't, um, she wasn't very successful in, in getting, well, she was not at all successful in getting uh, the book published because uh, it was her manuscript, A Pardon's Tale, which we have here, uh, is not really publishable as it stands because it is so many footnotes and appendices and footnotes to appendices uh, that it's no wonder that Oxford University Press and other people that she offered it to sort of said, well, it's, you know, it's far too, it's enormously long for one thing. Uh, and of course, in the end, I mean, it is trying to prove a negative. I mean, had she written a, a book of that length absolutely proving, you know, that Ellen Turner had ten babies by Dickens or something, they would have been snapped up. The Longley archives, her amazing research, 102 notebooks full of research, the long manuscript of a pardoner's tale with all its notes and appendices, etc., uh, and masses of correspondence files with all sorts of people that, that, that um, uh, had um, been compiled during the years and years of her research. Um, that all came to us here, so um, including some wonderful relics like uh, Ellen's commonplace book that she kept as Mrs. Robinson after Dickens's death, but it does include um, a, a delightful poem she wrote about the death of Mamie Dickens's little dog, uh, because she remained very close, good friends with Dickens's sister-in-law Georgina Hogarth and his older, though not his younger daughter, um, after Dickens's death. And of course, scholars, um, uh, including myself, have, have, have drawn on it um, for years. Most notably, of course, Claire Tomlin, uh, in her very celebrated and uh, excellent uh, biography of Ellen called Invisible Woman, which was published in 1990 uh, and uh, dedicated indeed to Catherine Longley, who had given her the run of her research. And although Claire herself came, Claire Tomlin came to the opposite conclusion. I mean, that Dickens, that Ellen was indeed Dickens's mistress, and that there might well have been a child. People are still searching everywhere for this child, but it's never been found. <laughs> we all drew enormously on Catherine's work, um, so that the archives here are really very important. I mean, nobody embarking on biographical work, on serious biographical work on Dickens can afford to ignore these archives that we have here. As I have recently written, it's, because, it's rooted in the fact that Dickens, uh, like Jane Austen, is one of our great national treasure authors, um, a giant of the heritage industry. His work still attracts huge audiences. Um, because, as John Sutherland has said recently, he's deeply embedded in our national psyche. And this has a lot to do, I think, with him being the great celebrant of Christmas, uh, of family uh, festivity, hearth, home, family love, and so on. And one thinks of the Cratchit's Christmas dinner and the Christmas carol and so on, which almost everybody knows, even if they've read nothing else of Dickens. Uh, and radiant domesticity is the... Uh, dominant mood in his great novels at the end, especially, say, David Copperfield. Um, so any association of him and his work with the, even the remotely salacious is bound to have for us an interest that seems destined never to lose its piquant flavour. <laughs>